Hello and welcome back to Organic Cardboard. My name is Owen Kniep and today uh, I would like to uh, discuss uh, the Red Cathedral. This is a game that is produced by Devere Games, the same people that make Botoku and uh, Lacrimosa. Uh, it's produced, it was uh, designed uh, by uh, Sheila Santos and Israel uh, Sendrero, if I'm saying that right. And uh, what you're doing in the Red Cathedral is you're basically one of these architects that have been commissioned uh, by Ivan the Terrible uh, to produce this this like uh, really uh, uh, pretty uh, cathedral in his uh, honor uh, and all of his glory, I guess. And um, and you're you're trying to outcompete your other architects that might be playing with you. It does have a solo option as well, which I I did play and it does it does work pretty well uh, for what it is. Um, uh, this game's uh, it's, it goes up to four players. It's rated ten and up. I, I would I would have a hard time getting a kid to really be able to follow along with a serious game of this. But the mechanics of the game, I think that they would be able to understand fairly well. Um, and speaking of mechanics, this game is a mechanics game. I mean, this game is that's it's almost purely a mechanics based game. The theme is is whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter what's going on as far as the theme's concerned and the way that all of the like uh, actions play themselves out. Uh, it very much has this like uh, puzzly kind of uh, mechanical thing that, if in fact that could be the theme of it, is just puzzle mechanics. Uh, because what you're uh, every time you're doing all these actions, you're having to work out timing and um, all these like. Uh, kind of abstract concepts that don't really play in very well in an actual like theme of feeling like you're really going out and getting these 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 resources these pro you know this stuff that they're these building materials that they're going to be using to to build out these pieces on the board um, but the mechanics that it does use uh, do work really well and they're a lot of fun uh, to go through um, but um, We'll, we'll talk more about the theme here in a little bit, but uh, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and just discuss the, the three. I'm not going to go through like a big rules teach of this game or, or a big explanation of what all's going on exactly. Um, but I basically just want to talk about the, the, the gist of what you're going to be doing in here. And so you've got three uh, main uh, actions that you can uh, perform on any of your turns. And so those are going to include getting... Um, like claiming one of these cathedral sections. So you're going to have a uh, planned out cathedral that's on the board. And this cathedral is going to show uh, all of these different uh, sections that you can claim. And then you have to build to get the points for them. Um, there's all these little uh, special like bonus tiles that you can get as well for claiming certain, certain uh, uh, sections on the board. Uh, and you have to be kind of careful about which ones you, that you select because if you get the ones on the top before the ones on the bottom um, or vice versa, anytime uh, you build something up on the top, if you've got other claimed pieces underneath of it, then you lose points if that piece is built first. Um, so there's a little bit, you got to be a little careful about like when you're picking these uh, places to claim them. But... Uh, essentially, you're going to have every every game. You're going to have a, a randomly picked uh, cathedral to build out. Uh, it's just a different configuration. There's nothing really like you know that's going to immediately give you a strategy. Unless I guess you play this game a whole lot and you might have some kind of pre-game strategy for it. Um, but you'll have like a little card here that'll that'll show you uh, how that cathedral is going to be set up. Um, and then as your your playing turns. Again, you're either going to be claiming one of these sections, one of these little blueprints, these little pieces of the cathedral that are being built. Um, you, you can claim it by putting one of your little flags and you're saying, hey, that's mine. I'm going to be building that section. Uh, if when you do that, too, you're going to get an option to take these little bonus tiles that are really nice because they give you extra um, actions or like resources that you can pick up uh, whenever you're, you're playing one of your turns. And, uh, but you have to pay for them too, so you have to make sure you have the money available to do so. And then, uh, so you're, you're claiming those sections, you're building those sections, and uh, the, the big part of the game, though, the, 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 you know, the real wheelhouse of this game, the, the, the way this game is really going to shine is, is this core mechanic 
of this wheel that uh, of these where you're placing these dice out in order to take an action. So when this this would be the um, the type of turn that you'd be taking if you're taking resources from the market. Uh, so again, you got three different things that you can. I mean, three like types of turns that you can take. You're either taking uh, one or the other. So you're either going to take these resources from the center. You're either going to claim a section of the cathedral, or you're going to deliver and possibly uh, complete a section off of the the cathedral itself. So in this wheel here, you've got um, all these dice laid out. And the way this works is that uh, whenever you want to take a turn, you'll uh, look around this, this board and where you're wanting to go. Like, let's say I'm wanting to get these stones right here. I need to get one of these dice to land on this section. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to uh, look at what the pip value is of those dice. And that's how many spaces that dice is, that die is going to move if you select that die to move. Um, so if you select like this white die here, really all of these are on sixes. Let's pretend this is a two just to make it easier because I'm, I'm talking about getting over here to this, this stone section. If I take this green die now, it'll go one, two, and I can place it in any of these. These three sections don't really matter too much at all. But uh, once I've placed it there, I get to claim those resources and I'll re-roll the die and put it at whatever pip value is showing at that point. And that means that next time somebody takes that die, they're going to have to move that many spaces and then claim whatever section uh, it lands on the board. And you notice there's these little cards sitting on the sides too. These are like bonus actions that you can take in these different quadrants on the board. So they represent like these guilds that you're influencing. And um, But again, themes based it on, they're just some extra mechanics for you to, to get to where you need to be to claim and build these different sections of the cathedral that are ultimately what are uh, the main way that you're going to be getting points. There's some other ways that you can get little bonus points as you play it out here and there, but uh, the main way you're getting them is from uh, completing these sections on the cathedral. So uh, going back to this wheel though, if you uh, you know, take one of these die actions and it lands on a section where there's already a die, then you get to double that action. So that's that's like something that you're, you're kind of trying to do if you can. Like if I then took this green die later on, one, two, three, four, five, it would come all the way around in a clockwise order over and land next to this white die. And then instead of getting one gold, I would get two gold in this section. So that's that's pretty neat. You can't ever have more than three in one section. So if the board ended up getting set up in a way where everything moved and this whole section was filled up, I could never uh, land on that section during my turn. I would have to take one of those die out and move it somewhere else or figure out a different way to get gold if that's what I'm looking for, um, which is where those guilds can come into play. Like this one will let you trade out, uh, I'm sorry, this one will let you trade out resources. You can like trade out two resources for one or four for two, so you can kind of mix them up. And you're really you're limited on how many resources you can hold at a time. You start out being able to hold six, and then as you claim uh, sections out on the cathedral, it'll open up spaces for you to be able to put um, more resources down, but you can only ever hold at the max uh, 10 out at a time. So you're gonna, you can't just like amass all these, these you know, building resources. You're gonna have to uh, figure out a way to get them on the board. And that's gonna include uh, not only the normal building uh, pieces, but also these little, these little gems, these little different, you know, there's a green and a purple little jewel. And what these, uh, where these come into play is that once a section has been built on the uh, cathedral here, then you have these adornments um, again, it, this, uh, this all starts getting really like abstract and kind of like odd <laughs> the way that this, all these mechanics work. But when a, a section is built, if there's no adornments on it, you have four uh, adornments that you can put on uh, the cathedral that'll gain you uh, a little bit of extra bonus points. And if you can add gems at the same time, if you have them in your, in, in your section on the board, on your player board to be able to place out, um, you can uh, spend the, the basic resource for the, that particular adornment and add up to two gems of different colors on that adornment at the same time. And so then once that goes into that section, it'll give you those little extra bonus points. Those little bit of points um, do make a big difference 
And this game really is about like maximizing all of your actions and being able to to to, to make it work in a way that's going to be the most efficient. And otherwise, unless you have you know, unless you're playing with somebody that's not uh, playing that efficiently themselves, you're not going to be able to to really get ahead unless you're um, not doing everything just kind of willy nilly. You need to like plan out what you're trying to do before you do it. But um, that's that's really basically the game, though. You're 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 playing with this wheel, this this resource uh, market wheel here. Uh, that's the biggest thing that you're doing, and then you're timing out when you're going to take uh, these different sections uh, of the cathedral, and you're trying to do it in a way where you can claim you know claim them faster than anybody else. I believe if you if you've uh, fully finished out uh, all uh, six of yours, that game's going to end. Uh, so once somebody, if you, you can't just like let somebody go and keep building all these little pieces out here, uh, you're going to have to kind of stay with them unless you've got some other special way that you're gaining points. Now there are, again, a couple other little ways that you can gain points on the board. There's even like a section here on the uh, on the, this dice wheel that you can just simply gain points from. Um, and then you can, you can trade in points to get a little bit of money or to re-roll. Uh, the dice if you need to, uh, to if you're like really in a pinch but you really don't want to do that if you can help it. Um, but again, that's that's essentially, yeah, I'm not going to go into too uh, much uh, more uh, of, of the mechanics. Um, you know, one thing that I, I do like to mention that's really uh, fun about the game and the mechanics is that as you're claiming out these these little uh, sections on the cathedral and you're taking these these bonus tiles as long as you can pay for them when you can when you get them you'll see these little uh, amounts that will cost uh, on your board uh, even if you can't pay for them you can still take them but they go face down and you can't ever use them they just take up a spot so they're not really helping you later on throughout the game but if you can take out some some really good uh, cathedral sections that have, have some nice workshop uh, some little bonus tiles on them when you place them into these sections on the board, they have a die color associated with them. And anytime you roll that die, you get to also take uh, the resources from wherever that, um, well, for this particular one that's red here. Uh, like, let's say I had it in the blue section. And every time I did a blue action, then with the die, I could. Uh, also take whatever the red section is sitting at and so it kind of like doubles up your your actions that you're getting to do whenever you're taking resources from the market um, those are those are really fun uh, I found when I played it I really wanted to go for those and make that you know work for me that's a that's a fun mechanic uh, the other ones just give you like a basic resource uh, which which can be nice too so I like every time uh, let's say you get one of these ones with the gems that can be uh, a little harder to get um, Every time I like take, if I had this in this section here where my green die is at, every time I'm using the green die, no matter where it lands at, I'm still going to get to get a uh, purple gem as well, as long as I can fit it into my um, into my player board. Um, so so that's fun. Um, but a lot of a lot of little uh, mechanics you'll see on each of the cathedral pieces. It shows you uh, a certain amount of points that it'll give you. It also shows you like a little bit of money that it might give you just depending on what section you're building. Um, and, and, and once you build it out, I mean, it, it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's not ugly, uh, but it's not like super pretty. It just looks like a bunch of little random kind of, you know, pieces all over it. Uh, you got all these random flags and, and, uh, little adornments and things that just, again, random, uh, they, 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 they're just kind of there to mark where you've uh, gained your points at. Um, you'll add them up around this track. Uh, the track's kind of neat. It kind of does one of those things where you don't actually score points until you get beyond a certain spot on this board. So you'll gain these little, um, I don't know if they call these like faith, faith or um, not faith, they, they mark them with a cross, um, influence or so, something along those lines. Uh, but every time you're getting so far with those, you'll eventually hit an actual point. And so you only count these these bigger point numbers, not the little numbers in between. Uh, and as you get around the board, it'll start to be uh, where they'll, you'll start to get a lot more points for all of your actions. But in the beginning, all of your beginning actions, you're not getting actually that many points. It takes you 25 like sort of points in order to get seven real points on the game. Um, the, the, uh, the otherwise, the, the components are, are pretty nice for the game. Uh, they use a lot of wood pieces. 
Uh, most of it's wood. Um, you got nice, like, you know, just, just general, you know, bricks, logs, little pieces of stone, little chunks of whatever that look like they're supposed to be gold, and little yellow wads of whatever, <laughs> little meeple pieces. And then you've got a, you got some nice little plastic gems. The gems look really nice. You know, anytime you see the, the shiny little plastic gems, they, they do look pretty. Um, and they, they serve their, their purpose. You got little cardboard coins. Um, no reason why you really need like metal coins for this game unless you just happen to really love it. Um, and let's go ahead and, and then move on to how I really felt about playing this game. So um, I, I will go ahead and just say right off the bat, I did really, uh, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Um, I enjoyed the puzzle nature of it. Um, now I just, I actually only played a, a solo game of this. Um, I'm sure just like most games are going to be more fun when you play them with uh, a group of people. Uh, but I played one solo game and um, and so I'm, I'm working against an, uh, a you know a pretty a fairly tough uh, Automa opponent, and uh, and I just had to be really careful about what I was doing. I had to really think about all of my actions. If you're playing with other people, you're not going to have to think that hard because you know to keep the game rolling, uh, it's going to be a little more smooth of a game. So I'm not knocking it at all on the the amount of time that that took because uh, I really took my time playing that out, and I was learning the game at the same time. Um, but I had fun. I did uh, just like barely win it at the end. So that was that's like always really fun. You know, when you just barely win. It's not really fun when you lose by a whole lot or you win by a whole lot. But it's really fun when you win by just a little bit. And so I, I, I enjoyed that. But um, I will have to say that the lack of theme in this game um, is a real deterrent for me. Uh, now, so, some people are going to really enjoy the mechanics of the game, and these little abstract mechanics are are well done. Um, they're, they, they do make your brain hurt as you're trying to figure out how to, to make them uh, work in a way that, that's best for you. And, and when you do get the resources that you need to make a big play on that cathedral, uh, build a piece out, or place one of your more difficult uh, adornments out with the two different color gems and get all those extra bonus points. That does feel really good. Um, but uh, for me, it's just, it's a little disjointed. Uh, I enjoyed that one game of it. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna play it again. Um, or let's let's say I, I'm not gonna go looking to play it. Now, if I've got some, if I'm not, if I don't have anything else in my face, and I've got other people that are wanting to play it. I'll be happy to get it out, and I'm sure we'll have a good time. But I don't think I'm going to want to go back to this game when I've got so many other games that I um, get much more immersed into when I've got a lot better of a, a, a theme that I'm feeling out of the game. Um, you know, the things that are going to be actually, like, you know, pulling me in. This didn't really pull me in. This wheel kind of pulls you in only on that mechanic base you know way that it's, it's only pulling you in because it's it's fun to think about where you're placing dice at how they're gonna you know change uh how you can maximize your turns how you can get like a bunch of resources in one turn um and and make that uh, work for you uh that's that's what drew me in but it felt like all i was doing was tinkering around with gears the whole time uh, I didn't really feel like I was really a, you know, this architect building out these pieces. It's kind of anticlimactic as you build these pieces out. Um, you're not sending like, you know, workers out, build, you know, to acquire the resource. You're not producing the resources. Uh, you're just uh, simply uh, manipulating this wheel and getting it to work in your favor. Um, so uh, going on to, to how I would rate this game. Um, now, I, I'm going to go ahead and say um, that my personal score uh, might not be like a true reflection of like the game itself as far as you know just basing it off of the mechanics um, for me uh, from what the, the kind of enjoyment that I had out of the game I'm gonna give it a, a 6 out of 10 I think at that level it's a game that I um, know that like I would not hate to play again. I would I would enjoy playing it again, but I'm not gonna go looking for it. I'm not gonna be trying to get other people to play it. Um, 
if I, if, if I go to the board game meetup and somebody's got this on the table and no, nobody's got anything else going on, I don't have any other particular games that I'm looking to play, uh, and they're looking for a player, I might sit down and be like, okay, I'll play it, and I'll probably enjoy it. So it's not, I'm not trying to hate on the game by, by putting it at that level. Um, I could definitely see other people rating this more like an 8 out of 10, uh, just purely because it is well done with the, the kind of euro -y abstract mechanics of it. But for me personally, I think uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it at that, that 6 out of 10. Um, I'm actually uh, going to be uh, getting rid of this game tomorrow. I've got somebody that's, uh, that's, that's going to be picking it up uh, from me uh, at the board game meetup. And uh, who knows, I may, I may actually end up playing it uh, with her uh, that day, too, just to kind of show her the game and get it out. Who knows? I might have some other stuff that I'd rather play, though, so we'll see. Uh, but uh, I don't hate the game. I, I, I really don't dis dislike it. I just I have too much other stuff in my collection right now, and it's not going to get played uh, at my house. Um, because I just know I've got other stuff that I'd rather play and I've got so little time for all, all these games back here. Uh, so I think that's about all I have to say for the Red Cathedral for today. Um, you know, it's not a bad game. Uh, I think it's a good game. And if you're interested in it, I think you should check it out. I think you should see if you can get a pickup game of it. It's probably not too expensive for you to find if you just want to, you know, just pick it up to try it out. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a solid game, but it's just not personally for me. So... Take that for what it's worth. Uh, but anyways, guys, uh, I, as always, I thank you guys so much for stopping by, uh, listening to me ramble on about games. Um, I, I really do appreciate it so much. Um, and if you guys enjoy this kind of content, you know, a couple of those free clicks on the screen really does help support out channels like mine. And I, I really appreciate it when you do. But as always, do what is right for you. And until next time, guys, have a great rest of your evening. Take care. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.